Well, hey everyone, it's Monday and time for another Monday Mastery. It's been a crazy couple of weeks. This looks a little bit crooked, so let me just make an adjustment here. That looks a little better. Um, it's been a it's been a crazy couple of weeks. It's my transition to Texas for the winter, and uh, that was a brutal. Even though it was only an eight-hour trip, it was still a brutal trip towing the trailer down there, and and so you know I spent three days trying to recover from that trip, and you know it, it's and now I'm on my way back to Michigan for a, for another week. And so it's it, my travel schedule or my travel arrange. I need to have somebody rearrange my travel. That's that's what I need to do. Anyway, I hope you all had a great couple of weeks. I'm sorry about last week and and missing you all. But we're going to talk about dumpster diving for dates today. Uh, we were supposed to talk about that last week, but it had some pretty good response. And hey, Addie, thanks for joining in. It had some pretty good response, and uh, so I thought I would keep the topic for this week and uh, just just see where just see where the conversation goes. And part of where this came from is uh, I I on a regular basis I get people telling me that there are no good people left. You know, there's no good men left. There's no. Um, there's no good women left and uh, you know and everybody has their own experience and it's it's difficult to to try to convince people otherwise based on their experience but i'm here to tell you that there are a lot of great men out there and there are a lot of great women and hey char thanks for oh you're in river falls wisconsin uh, in the north country uh, my hometown was supposed to be getting about 10 inches of snow last night and today. I don't think they got that much, but uh, Ironwood is, is, is cold tonight. The last time I checked, it was 2 degrees. And uh, when I left Texas yesterday, it was 78. I can't wait to get back. Hey, Jill, thanks for joining in. Glad you're here. And you can see I'm in transition. Um, I'm in Oklahoma on my way north. But uh, back to my back to my story is there are a lot of great men and a lot of great women. And after thinking about it and talking to a, to a number of people, I truly believe it, the the problem lies with with not that there aren't any good men or any good women. I think the problem lies with with the with the people you're choosing, the places you're looking, or uh, not being clear on on exactly what you want in a relationship. And hey, Terry, thanks for joining in. One of the things that I've found is that when you are crystal clear about what you want in a relationship, when you're crystal clear about what your deal breakers are, in, and I, I, in my blog last week, I, I called them the fences. The, the deal breakers are the fences that keep out the people that you don't want to that you don't want in your life or the the toxic relationships and it doesn't mean that that some of these people aren't good people it's just they're not the right fit for you and the problem I see is that when when we're not crystal clear about about what we want in a relationship we tend to date anybody that 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 has a couple of the things that, that we find attractive. And, you know, and, and, and I'm not just talking about looks. I mean, I'm talking about characteristics. I'm talking about um, interests. You know, we, should, we share a couple of common interests and, oh, well, maybe we should, we should date and see what happens. Unfortunately, uh, when you dig deeper and when you, when you start uh, uh, getting to know them a little better, there are red flags and and unfortunately so many of you don't stop dating when you start seeing the red flags and consequently you st you get into longer term relationships you know, and when i say longer term i'm talking two three five years and all of the all of the, the time you're you're feeling that something's not quite right 
Hey, Sheila, thanks for joining in. And when you, when you start feeling that something's not right, that's the time to start questioning. Is this the right relationship for me? And it's, it's, I firmly believe that it's, that it's your, your gut instinct or in my personal opinion, it's the Holy Spirit telling you, no, that's not the right person for you. Hey, Chris, how are you doing? Thanks for joining. So, you know, it's, it, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a multiple, uh, multiple prong issue. I don't want to say, it, well, it can be a problem. And, and it, but it starts with being crystal clear about what you want and not taking the dates that, that are, are going to be, that you know right off the top of your head that are going to be non-productive. And when I say non-productive, they're going to be one and done dates. You, you, you meet somebody and you, you may even begrudgingly go out with them just because you're bored. But that's no reason to date anybody. It's, it, you have to, to, to be successful in dating and to, to find that extraordinary relationship, uh, you have to know what your, what your wants, needs, and desires are. Now, most people can tell me, probably 95% of people can tell me what they don't want or know, know more about what they don't want than what they do want. And consequently, when you know that, that much about what you don't want, that's what you focus on. And then when, when that's what you're focusing on, guess what? That's what you find. You know, I, I've told this story several times that that uh, that you know when you go to shop for a car or a truck or whatever you're looking for you 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 pick out you go to the dealership you find it you you know you, you you test different models you drive different models and you finally pick out the car and the color and then the the the, the next thing you know is you start seeing all of these, all of these uh, same cars, whether it's a Toyota Corolla or, or Camry or uh, the Ford uh, Taurus or you know the, the the Chrysler 200 or 300, whatever it is you're looking for, you start seeing them everywhere, and that's and there's a technical technical uh, some technical stuff that that goes along here. It's the reticular activating system. It, it, it focuses our, our minds on the things that, that are running through our mind or the things that, we're, that we have in the front of our brain. And, it, and so the same thing goes, goes with dating. You know, when you focus on the negative aspects of dating, well, guess what happens? It, it, you start spotting all the negative aspects of, 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 the, of people that you don't want to date. And those are, the, those are the ones that you tend to find. And so when you continually are looking at the, uh, at the negative aspects of dating, well, you, and, and people continually tell me that, that online dating is a problem. And there's nothing but scammers online. Um, you know, there's, there are scammers out there. But there's 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 a, a a problem when when you when you are attracting nothing and and I have a lot of people tell me that they've they've met nothing but scammers online. Now whether that's true or not is you know I I would I would bet that that they have met some some people that are not scammers. They're just not. Uh, they're not the, 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 they don't have the characteristics or the traits that they're looking for. So uh, consequently, the only people they talk to they, or they end up talking to are the scammers. And the scammers are really slick. They have all the right words down. They, they can sweet talk you. But the amazing thing is if you're really dealing with a scammer, they're, you're, you're probably not talking to the same person two days in a row. A lot of these, a lot of these scammers work in, in, 
in uh, phone rooms or, or what we used to call in the financial industry, the bullpen. Everybody's in a cubicle and talking and, and, and carrying on a conversation or typing. They're, they're typing in, 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 in not so much on the phone, but uh, they're typing messages and they're just making you feel all warm and fuzzy and, and good inside. Uh, but, and, and then the whole time you're not paying attention. You know, they're, they're making you feel good. So, oh, this is a nice guy or this is a nice woman. And the next thing you know, they're asking you for money. Well, you've got to learn to, to use the tool. A lot of times online dating can be like putting a shotgun in the hands of a, of a, of a 10 year old. You don't necessarily want to do that. You know, you have some responsibility to, uh, to learn how to use the tool. You have to take the time to write a great profile. Hey, Terry, uh, let's see. Terry says, let me catch up here real quick. I'm kind of raging on here. Terry says, I get tired of hearing the negative about dating. Uh, some of them were only online eight hours and gave up. I know that's, and, and that's exactly what I, you know, and, oh, that's a whole nother, <laughs> That's a whole nother ball of, uh, 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 can of worms because one of the things that, that, that we all do, let's face it, we all do. I've done it. You know, you get online, you slap a, a crappy profile together just to see who's there. And then you start, you start trying to reach out to people and pretty soon you're getting all this negative, uh, all this negative feedback from the standpoint that you're you're getting scammers or not the people that you want to talk to. Well, part of it is because you wrote a crappy profile. You know, it, it takes time, it takes effort. If you don't spend at least two or three hours crafting your 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 online dating profile, uh, you're you're not putting any effort into it. You're expecting somebody to wave, your fairy godmother to wave a magic wand over it and start attracting the, the, the magical people that you want to meet. Hey, Phil, thanks for joining in. Phil's in Olathe. Um, Terry says, you, you have to be good at knowing the signs of scammers and fake people. Absolutely. And that goes back to what I was saying is, is learning how to use the tool. Whenever you have somebody that tells you they're overseas, uh, they're a missionary, they work on an oil rig uh, offshore, they're, uh, it could be any number of, it, it, anytime somebody, they're in the military and, and stationed overseas, there are any number of scams that start with somebody being overseas. And the minute that, that, information comes out you should say yeah i'm not into an overseas long distance relationship thank you very much goodbye they may be real but odds are they're not and again especially if they say they're missionaries or they're they're working on an oil rig or in the military and please forgive me i love the military but there are a lot of scammers that 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 play on that information and uh, that that want to tug at your heartstrings because they know that a lot of people in this country love the military and you just have to let let those those people pass you know there's there's a there's there are a lot of a lot of ways of uh or uh, there are a number of ways of 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 um, identifying scammers. You know, one of them is, is do a little background search. You know, Google, you know, find out what their name is. Find out, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, I just, hey Kimberly, thanks for joining in. Yep, I do a live every Monday. And so glad to see you're here, thank you. Uh, so, you know, do a Google search of their picture or do a tin eye. T I or T yeah T I N E Y E search of their picture, 
And even if you just have a first name, a lot of times if, if their picture is on social media anywhere, the picture will come up and you'll start to be able to verify what they're saying. Uh, then, you know, just when you start to get to talk to somebody and, and you think they're, they're, they're pretty serious, if you, don't, if, you, if you don't quickly recognize scammers, just get their name, their, their, their birth date, and tell them that you're going to do a background check. And I can guarantee you that if, if they're a scammer, uh, they're, they're either going to give you bogus information or you're, you're not going to, they're going to give you information and they're, you're not going to find anything on them. And when, you're, when you don't find anything on them, then you know, you, you, your, your, your antenna should come up. Your, your, the red flag should start waving because you should be able to uh, start finding information on them, even on, especially if you're, you know, you're doing on Facebook dating, they're going to be on Facebook. So there's, it, it, it's a matter of doing some due diligence and stopping and, and not getting so emotional about, about meeting somebody new or, or doing something, uh, getting excited. You know, it, it goes back to dating is a, or finding your soulmate is a long-term proposition. And the odds of you finding that someone in the first five or six people that you talk to online is slim to none and slim left town. Now, it doesn't mean you're not going to meet a lot of great people. I have met some wonderful women online and over the years, and some I will remain friends with for a lifetime. Others, it was one and done and blocked, and <laughs> we're on to a whole different, uh, whole different avenue here. Uh, Terry says, I continually update my profile every few weeks, change pictures around, and change some, uh, some things in my profile. Awesome. Now, all of you, take that example from Terry. That's what you should be doing. Updating things, changing things up, updating your pictures. Uh, Terry, you, you should, you're a prime example of, of what to do correctly. And, you know, and it takes time. And, and, and Terry, I'm sure you'll, you'll agree with me on this. It takes time. And if you're on a couple of different sites, uh, it, you know, you have to update each one and, and stay on top of it. It's not something that any, any of us wants to do, but it's, it's important. Hey, Janny, thanks for joining in. Henrietta, thank you. I'm glad you're here. And, but it's, it's so important to, to keep your profile fresh. I can't tell you how many people, you know, over the years that I've, I've, I've dated online, I can go back and three years, four years, five years later, run across the same person that I saw five years ago. And the profile hasn't changed. The pictures haven't changed. And let's face it, we've all changed in the last five years. I Even in three, the last three years, I know that I've changed physically. You know, my, I, I can see myself aging compared to some of, some of, my, some of my pictures uh, on Facebook and, and on, my, on my website, I can see that I've aged. So it's time to update some of those pictures. So that's, that's a good reminder, I need to do that. But these are the things that we need to do when we're, when we're online dating. And I know some of you are saying, no, I'll never, never do online dating. You know, I've heard too many, too many horror stories. Well, because those are the people that you're talking to. The people that you're talking to or th that you're listening to are ones that may have had horror stories or they've heard it from somebody who heard it from somebody who heard it from somebody. In my opinion, there aren't that, and, and don't misunderstand me, dating scams are a big, big business. It's a multi-billion dollar a year business. And, and, and Henrietta says she updates her profile a lot. Excellent. Another, another great example for you all. And, and, and I don't want to downplay it, but when you're smart, when you pay attention to what's going on, to the conversations that are being, uh, are, that are being, uh, being had, uh, the, minute, the minute it sounds too good to be true, 
you have to the again your antenna should come up and and start uh, start giving you warning signs the uh, uh the 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 red flag should be waving and that's when you need to start asking questions and and if you need to take notes or or if you're still talking online go back through your conversations online that's a great place for your notes make sure the story hasn't changed over the 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 few weeks or a couple of months uh, that that you've been talking and that's that's another thing most people right now want to be able to meet within a few weeks most people today are not uh, uh, don't want to spend forever texting you know and, and if if there's always an excuse not to meet then odds are it's a scam odds are they're they've got something to hide even if they're not a scammer it, I, I, and I've seen situations where married guys are on on uh, dating sites and they they talk a good story but when it comes time to meet well there's always an excuse they're not ready they they've got some things to work out they're going to be out of town whatever it is when you go through this enough times you know after three or four times you got to be saying hey listen when you're ready to get serious let me know until then i'm out and be you have to be you you, you have to be willing to cut the link uh, to to somebody who's just wasting your time and let's see Henrietta has been active here um, Henrietta says I met a nice guy online taking it very slow met on Facebook there you go um, and she says it just get to know each other and that's what it takes you know and and when and and like Henrietta says uh, you 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 have to take time to get to know someone and again if you can't meet or if they're not available to meet then stop wasting your time it's 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 a waste it, it it's just burning up good time that you could be investing in in searching for somebody else and a lot of you tell me that you'll only date one person at a time or you'll only have a conversation with one person at a time and that's all well and good but that conversation should should uh, i mean unless it's really leading to an extraordinary relationship that conversation should be over relatively quickly uh, if if you're not sensing a, a a great connection you know if if you have a couple of dates and you're not sensing a a, a wonderful connection uh, or the possibility of things going further then it's time to move on you don't because we all have a finite time on this on this earth and it's 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 a tragedy to to spend a lot of time uh, burning a lot of time uh, with the wrong people and that's that goes back to you know dumpster dating or dumpster diving for dates you know I know that sounds that sounds dramatic but a lot of you are doing that you're 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 settling you're 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 looking at people and saying yeah he has most he has most of the things I want or she has most of the things I want if if they don't have everything that you're looking for it's time to move on because they're not going to be an extraordinary mate you you should have your must have and your deal breaker list and if there's if there's stuff missing on your deal breaker or on your on your must have list uh, or things that that are showing up on your on your deal breaker list uh, it's time to move on there's no point in trying to trying to work things in in my opinion in, in trying to work things out because there there's only the the whole idea of your must have and your deal breaker list are to take as many of the hurdles out of your way as possible and when you when you start taking those hurdles out or out of the way you start having the ability to have an extraordinary relationship i'm convinced that that the greatest relationships have relationships have the most in common 
And Henrietta says, we met at restaurants and movies, uh, not home visiting. There you go. That's, that's a wise, I, I, I like that, Henrietta, because you know, when, you, when you're at home, when you're cooking dinner with each other, things can get way too intimate. And at, at least uh, too quickly. And, and as soon as you enter, sex enters into the, into the uh, scenario, uh, you both stop learning. Or the learning about each other starts slowing down. And uh, it, it, the, it becomes a focus on, on um, the physical as opposed to developing intellectual, spiritual, emotional connections. Addie says, I've wasted, uh, I've wasted time before talking to guys online. Not anymore these days. I'm learning. Awesome. And, and, and it's so easy to get caught up in, in, in chat conversation or you know, the, the online conversations. You know, unless you're, you're, you start talking on the phone and then um, uh, you, you, you should be moving to a point where you can meet. I mean, unless there's some extraordinary situation where, where it's physically impossible or it's a long distance relationship uh, it, it, or a budding long distance relationship, but eventually you still have to make arrangements to meet. Henry says, it must be kind, have good manners. Absolutely. Gentlemen, there you go. Um, you, you always, and, and guys, always be a gentleman. You know, it, if if you're anything less than a gentleman, then then you're you're one of the bottom feeders. And guys, I'm hoping any any of you that are listening tonight, I hope you're not one of the bottom feeders. You know, I I know a couple of you, um, Phil. I know you're not. I know you're a good guy, um, and I don't know any of the other guys on here. All I've had are uh, ladies pop on. So if there's any guys out there. Uh, Drop a drop a line and say hi. Um, so the you know there there are so many so many good places to to look. But again, you have to be crystal clear about what you want in in your relationship. You have to know what your extraordinary looks like. You know I I know what my extraordinary looks like, and and, and it's going to be different from yours. And yours is going to be different from somebody else's. And, you know, I, and don't get sucked into the, the, um, the belief that, that you're too picky. You know, a, a lot of, in, in our society, we, we live in an immediate gratification society. And number one, that's toxic for trying to find extraordinary. And, I, and the reason I say that is because if if it if you're looking for immediate gratification, you're always going to be disappointed in a relationship, because you're you're not taking time to do your due diligence. You're not taking time to get to know each other before you commit to each other, and in in not in not taking that not doing that due diligence, uh, you you end up spending way too much time with with people that aren't the right ones, and in in, in many cases toxic relationships you know it, it, if if you're newly divorced if you're newly widowed take your time to heal don't don't come in and create a toxic relationship we all suffer from from some some form of uh, I don't want to say PTSD, but some sort of stress some sort of anxiety from from our divorce or from being widowed and the word, especially if you were in a toxic relationship, it's, it's, it's so easy to get sucked back into another toxic relationship because you haven't taken time to peel back the layers of who you are. You haven't taken time to, to heal the, your emotional stress uh, uh, or, or heal emotionally from, from the, number one, the loss of the marriage, and number two, the loss of of of, of a spouse. Uh, so I mean, it, it's it, there is so many, th and, and, and it just takes time. And I know for one, I did I did things the wrong way. I started dating way too early. That's why I'm telling you not to start too soon. Take time. And I'm not saying don't go out on dates. Don't don't go out for dinner with someone. But make it make it clear that that. 
um, you're you're not interested in a in a serious relationship at this point and it's so important to 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 communicate that and guys unfortunately we don't listen to what the ladies are telling us and especially widows you know they are so not and for those of you that are widowed um it it's it's ah it, it's such a such a can of worms there um because it it and, and most of you aren't going to, aren't, if you're newly widowed, most of you aren't going to believe me. Uh, and and I've, I've had to, I've, I've, I've had so many people come back to me and say, man, Rick, you were absolutely right. Ladies, it takes you guys about four to five years to fully be ready to start dating again. And I know some of you are saying, oh, no, Rick, I'm ready. I want to go now. And that's fine. Date casually. Don't don't necessarily date for or be looking for your next relationship, because you don't know what you don't know, and you don't have. Uh, there are so many things that that pop up. You know, the first for those of you that are widows that have been widowed for more than a couple of years, you know that first year is a fog. You just spend your time going day to day, trying to figure out how to survive just trying to figure out how to make it to the next day. You know, and then gradually you come out of that fog and then you got to start figuring out who you are, what you want to do. You know, what are the what are the things that 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 I like because all of your plans are are screwed up. And even if you're divorced, you know, things that you had planned as a couple may be screwed up now because you're not with somebody else. You're alone. You're single. And I'm not, and I don't want to make anybody feel bad, but you know, hey, listen, we're all single, and that's why you're all here. And let me get caught up here a little bit. Terry says, I went out a couple of times with a nice guy, but I soon realized that he wants to sit at home and watch a movie. I prefer to go out and enjoy activities till you really get to know someone or get to to know a person better. Absolutely, you know, and and you know, that's a good point, Terry. And and. What happens though is a lot of times we do that stuff up front and then we, you know, once we get comfortable and, and decide we're in a relationship and then we start to get comfortable at home and we start missing the things that we were doing when we first started dating. So you got to keep some of that up. Uh, hey, Jacqueline, thanks for joining in. Jacqueline says, where are you, Rick? I am in Chelsea, Oklahoma. I'm on my way to... Uh, to Kansas City tomorrow and then immediately turning around and heading to Michigan um, tomorrow, late tomorrow, or hopefully mid-morning tomorrow. So it's going to be a long travel day. And Addie says, I've had that issue too, Terry, a lot. And I'm sorry if, if I'm, I'm, I'm reading notes between you guys because I can't tell if um, on, on, on this system, I can't tell if it's, if, if you're writing notes to each other. And, uh, so, and he said, I, I do not want a homebody or someone, uh, antisocial. It makes me feel, um, uh, they are only after one thing. Ab oh, that's a good one. Absolutely. And Terry says, I know a widow, widow, widower that's widowed two months and in a relationship. Oh, my God. Yeah, I know. And at, 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 a month or so ago, maybe maybe two months ago, I talked about a, a, a widower that that was had reached out to me for for advice and I, I I just point blank told him don't date because he was less than six months out from from being widowed and he came back and said no my wife told me I needed to have someone and in in my life and to take care of me and she she told her best friend the same thing and and so I'm going to go out and find some well, I can tell you he's going to he's going to be very disappointed with anybody he finds because he's not taken time to heal and grieve the loss of that marriage, the loss of his wife. You know, you can't, you know, I've I've experienced so many times both both personally and professionally 
um, people talk about their ex or their, their late wife. And if that's all the conversation revolves around, then holy moly, is that a one and done date for me? You know, and, and I, you know, and, and I feel sorry for a lot of people um, that, that that's all I have to talk about. Or they carry a lot of anger about their ex. Ooh, that's a, that's a, that's a recipe for a toxic relationship right there. Uh, and Henrietta says, your advice has, has helped me a lot. Oh, thank you. I jumped in a bad relationship too soon. Your advice helped me get away from, from, from Fred. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he, was, he was very rude, demanding, and I was being used. I even thought of never dating again. You helped me a lot. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so happy. And, and, and see, that's, uh, Henrietta, you made my day. That's, that's awesome. And that's the stuff that I'm, this is the stuff I'm talking about. You know, we dumpster, and, and I call it dumpster diving for dates. But, you know, and, and a lot of this happens when we date too soon. Uh, just like Henrietta said, she and, and I'm, I'm so glad that that um, you recognize that, and I'm so glad that, that we were able to talk and, and, and help you walk through that a little bit. Um. <laughs> Sorry, Jacqueline. Yeah, I, I, it's 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 a, it's a crazy life right now. Um, Henrietta says, I thought four years of being a widower was, was, was too soon, have to heal. Um, absolutely. You know, it, it, and it takes time. You know, I, I know some widowers that or widows that, that, um, you know, take seven, eight, ten years before they're ready to, to, to move on. You know, there are a few of you that, that, that will do it quicker and, and, you know, maybe three years, you know, and, and. You know, we look at we look at that. Oh, time is passing by so quickly. I want to be with somebody. Yeah, but do you want to be with somebody, or do you want to be with the right one? You know, and that's uh, that's 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 the big question because it's it's so easy to get to get wrapped up in a relationship that isn't healthy, that isn't right. You know, it it you 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 have this pile of good stuff over here. And then you got this pile of crap that goes along with the relationship, and it, it and and we don't want these piles. We want the good stuff. And it, I'm I'm not saying that every relationship is is you know every extraordinary relationship is going to be rainbows, unicorns, and butterflies. It's it's not. Life happens. There's going to be stressors that 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 hit all of us. And when you're with the right person you're still going to have problems. When you're with your soulmate, there are still going to be issues. You just have to learn to work those things out. And when you're, when you're with your soulmate, you need, you'll, you'll, it, it will be much easier to, to uh, work things out when you have issues. Because you're both working in the same direction. You're both working for the betterment of the relationship. Not everybody's going to get their way every time. You know? and, and if you're in a relationship like that, that it's your way or my way or the highway, then that's not a healthy relationship for you. Uh, and Henrietta says, I'd rather be lonely. And I'm assuming that's that rather than being in a toxic or a bad relationship... Um, yeah, there you go. I'd rather be lonely than miserable. Absolutely. But you'd be surprised how many people out there, uh, both men and women, are, are, are willing to, to sacrifice a, a high level of, of, of happiness just to be in a relationship, just to be with someone. And it's, it, it's actually pretty scary because, uh, you know, yeah. Ah, it, it, it's just, in my opinion, it's no way to live uh, a healthy life. You know, just, and, 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 I, oh, I, I've got, <laughs> my mind is going in 12, 12 directions right now. Um, but it's, it, 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 it's so hard to, to, to talk with somebody that, that's, that needs to be in a relationship or is, is, is that needy that has to be in a relationship? 
you know, and, and, and don't misunderstand me. There are a lot of people that, that, that deal with self-esteem issues. There are a lot of, a, a lot of issues out there that, that um, need to be dealt with. And, and if you feel the need uh, that you just have to be in a relationship, regardless of whether it's a good relationship or a bad, I, I highly recommend seeking a good counselor or or a, a, a therapist, or even, maybe even your pastor, if there's a pastor, somebody in your pastoral staff that deals with relationships, to help you work through that 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 feeling that you need to have somebody in your life. And we and don't misunderstand me. Uh, I think you're all here. We're all here for the the uh, the same reason. We want somebody in our lives. But the idea is that let's make it the right one. So many of us have grown up in dysfunctional and dysfunctional families or dysfunctional households, and it's so easy to to fall into a trap of of what our parents did or uh, you know what what our step parents did or you know, and and it may not have been a healthy relationship. Most of us have never been exposed to extraordinary. Most of us have never been exposed to soulmate relationships. And those are those relationships are the ones that 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 we strive that we should be striving for. Uh, it, it's it, it's something that we have to we it, it we have to strive to 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 find those. And we may we may fall short of believing from time to time, saying, "Oh, I'll never find it." Well, you will. It just takes time. You're looking, as I've said a million times, you're looking for that needle in a haystack relationship. And you have to be smart about it. You have to be able to, to uh, for lack of better terms, cut and run quickly, in, in my opinion. Because the longer you hang around the wrong relationship, the less time you have to look for the right one. Terry says, I believe in living my life and, and healing myself is better th while waiting for the best match. I've made friends from singles groups and uh, get, out, uh, get out doing activities. I'm not looking to date because I'm, I'm lonely, so, uh, like so many people. See, that, and Terry, you're, you're, the, you're the prime example tonight. You, you've got it going on here. Uh, hey, Luann, thanks for joining in. Let's see, Luann says, does age and amount of time you were married when you uh, become a widow change how long uh, you should wait to, to get engaged? Um, well, it, it varies from, that's a great question, Luann. Thank you. Uh, it, it, it varies from person to person, but my experience is on average, it takes about five years. You know, and, and just just to be emotionally set, uh, if if you were going from a um, from a divorce position, it's a little different. It might be a little bit shorter. I the general rule of thumb is about one month for every year you were married. So if you were married for for thirty years, you could expect to be reasonably ready to date after thirty months. You know, and you know, about two and a half years. And one of the reasons I think it, it takes longer for widows to get there is that there's, it, it's, it's a double loss. It's, it's number one, the loss of the marriage, and it's also the loss of a spouse. And in, not in every case, but in a lot of cases, it, it, they were, they're good relationships. And so you, you've just lost your best friend. You've just lost the person you've spent the last 20, 30, 40 years with. And that's, that's, that's a huge loss. When you're, when you're dealing with a divorce, um, there was a lot of unhappiness in the, in the marriage already. So you know, when that split comes, it's a little easier to move on. doesn't mean it's, 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 uh, it's, it's going to be you know, a, a quick one. It still takes time because we all morph you know, when, when, when we get married or when we're in long-term relationships. We all morph to some extent to, to accommodate our partner, to accommodate the relationship. And it takes time to, to find out who we are uh, again. We've got to peel back the layers, the things. We've got to, we've got to dig out the things that we've, that we've buried or that we've suppressed 
to make the, the, the re relationship or the marriage work. And Henrietta says, I bought, a, I bought a widow book. Helps me a lot. I need to know, uh, feeling like I was, uh, was okay. Had to heal. And I really am. I'm, I'm okay with my life. And that's, uh, Henrietta, that's a great point. I, I want to I emphasize that a little bit. You know, you'll know when you're, that, that you're about ready to date when you get to a point that you're comfortable with who you are, you're comfortable with your own company. You, you're, you're not needing to be with somebody. You want to be with somebody or you may want to be with somebody. And I'm assuming that's why you're all here is because you do want to be with someone. Um, and, and it's, it, it's, uh, my mind just went in 12 different directions again. Uh, you know, it, it, it just takes time to, to figure out, it, it takes time to get to that point of being okay with your own company. You know, for me, it took about seven or eight years, you know, and, and, and I spent a lot of time dating and, and over the years. And um, it wasn't until uh, about four or five years ago that I really became comfortable with who I am and that I don't need anyone in my life, but I do want someone. And consequently, that puts you in the power, in, in the power seat, as it were. It, it allows you to be in control. You know, if, if a relationship doesn't look right, yeah, okay. Uh, next, you know, I, I, you, you can put yourself in a position of not needing to be in a relationship just to be there. You know, and, and that's, and Henrietta brings up that an awesome point is that, that, uh, you you have you, you, you when you get to the point where you're feeling okay uh, with your with yourself with your own company, that's an awesome position to be in. Any any other position is you're dating from a position of weakness, and when you're dating from a position of weakness, that's when you're going to find the the scammers, the 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 ne'er do wells, as I, as as they used to say. Uh, that that are going to take advantage of you. The, it's going to be a one-sided relationship. And when you discover you're in a one-sided relationship, it's time to leave. Uh, and how do you identify a one-sided relationship? You're the one doing all the giving. You're the one doing all the, all the, all the uh, making all the accommodations to, to make him or her happy. And they're just kind of floating along and, and they have all the power. You know, they, if they're unhappy, you start jumping through hoops to, uh, to appease them. Uh, let's see. Henrietta says, I love the advice you give us. Um, <laughs> oh, you're my hero. You saved me from, from misery. Ah, oh, that's so sweet. Thank you, Henrietta. Um, Luann says, my cousin met a guy on a dating, uh, dating site. I actually found him for her. And she had, she was married for one month and she passed away. A year later, he met my cousin and they are engaged. Uh, they are in their forties. That's an interesting twist. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, being married and, and I don't know how long the, the, the courtship before be, uh, before, uh, your cousin married this guy. Uh, if, if the marriage was that short, uh, there's probably not as long of a, a healing and grieving time. But, you know, I'm, when I'm talking about, you know, especially widows and, and, and primarily widows and widowers, it, it, you know, most of those people that I talk to are, are, you know, 15, 20, 30 years, 40 year marriages and when somebody passes away. And so it, it takes, you know, it, it, when you start getting into that kind of time frame, it takes time to, to recover. It, it takes time to heal. It takes time to grieve. You know, after, if, if something tragic like that happens after a month or two months, you know, even less than a year, uh, there's, a lot less, there's a lot less healing and grieving that has to go on because in that short of time, you're barely getting into a, a, a normal routine, a pattern of, of daily life. And it's, 
it um, it's just stuff that that every and every situation is going to be different. I wish I had I, you know I wish it were just easy enough that that um, advice or, or or my comments or uh, my recommendations were a, a, a one size fits all. But everybody, you you have to take what I say. Uh, and 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 use use the parts that you can and disregard the rest. And I'm not saying to disregard anything that I'm saying. You should listen to it all. Uh, but the but the reality is that there are going to be there's there's a million different ways of doing things, and you have to take the advice that works best for you. Uh, but you have to you 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 have to take action on it. You know, it's all good. It, it's all good to sit here and listen uh, and say, "Oh, yeah, that sounds great, Rick." And I've even had I've had uh, personal coaching clients where you know he he listen and say, "Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. I'll go do this. I'll go do that." And and, and I'd give him assignments to do for the next for the next uh, you know over over a two week time frame. We get back together, and he hadn't done anything. So I finally had to cut him loose because, you know, it, it, it was all, all well and good for him to say, yeah, 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 I'm going to do it. But he, he just, he wasn't following through. He was all excited during our one-on-one -on -one coaching and he needed that one-on-one -on -one, uh, continually. And I, you know, I, I couldn't be there with him continually to remind him and coach him and prod him and, and, and encourage him. You know, so you you have to take some responsibility in 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 getting out and doing these doing the doing the work, so to speak. Um, you know, and online, you know, just online dating, whether it's online dating or dating in person, you have to put in the effort. You have to make the effort to find the date. You and and where you look, it doesn't make any difference whether it's online or social events or church or work or um, charitable events or whatever it is. And there are plenty of places to look. It, it boils down to uh, you, you, you need to be able to strike up a conversation with anyone, anywhere, anytime. And it takes a little bit of skill to do that. It's not, you know, it, it, it can come off very awkward if you don't practice. And one of the one of the skills, and, and I practice this on a daily basis, especially now because it's because it's uh, because it's around the Christmas season. I just have a ball with this season. You know, it's it's you know you see parents with kids, and kids are acting up, and I'll start acting up, and you know the parents look at me and say, "Don't get them going," and I go, you know, we're laughing, and you know I might get the kid laughing. You know, it's it's I it it's uh, at the gas station today. You know, it's just, I wish the, there was a police officer um, it, it, gassing up his his cruiser, and I just looked at him and said, "Thank you for your service, Merry Christmas," and with a smile, and he was so appreciative. You know, learn how to strike up those kinds of conversations, and pretty soon, you know, when when you when you say things to the right person. It'll open up the doors to a, a, a much deeper, much much more serious conversation. Um, let's see. Henrietta says, "I was married in 1982 to uh, 2015. It took me four years to get through my through the fog. Um, he was my soulmate. It takes time to heal. It, yes, it does. And 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 Henrietta, I want to say, you know." That you recognize that, that that your late husband was was your soulmate. You're one of the few. You're one of the the, the 10, 12, 15 percent of people that have been in a soulmate relationship. You, the the standard for you is up here, and 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 that's good. That's and and that's where all of our standards should be. It should be way up here. You know, way out of out of out of camera range, and and the whole idea is. And, and Henrietta, for you, it's it's not going to be the the next the next guy you find, or the next soulmate you find. And I believe we all have more than one. Um, it, it's it's not going to be the same. It's going to be very very different. But it's still going to leave you with that same internal feeling that you're loved and cared for and appreciated. 
and, and he's going to feel the same thing. Um, and Luann says, thank you very much. God bless you. Well, thank you, Luann. I appreciate that. Um, and Henrietta says, yes, it will be good. Um, and, 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 you know, so it's, it's, and it all takes time. You know, it, 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 the, the newer you are to this, uh, the, the, I guess the, 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 the difficulty factor uh, since we're coming into the Olympics here, they, they have, you know, some of the sports have difficulty factors or some of the events have difficulty factors. And when you're new to dating, uh, there, it, it's a much higher difficulty factor than, 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 uh, than when you've been at it for four, five, eight, ten, eleven, almost twelve years. And, and uh, you know, in, in, as you go, it, it's like anything. It's as you go, you get better as long as you continue doing it. And I'm not saying that you have to do it every day, every week, week in, week out. There's going to be times when you take a break. You get, you just get tired. You know, I know I have, and it just, but it's, it's all part of the dating, uh, the dating process. It's all about finding that needle in a haystack relationship. So anyway, um, I hope this has been helpful for for you all. We're we're wrapping. We'll wrap this thing up now. Um, it's it's. Um, I'm sorry about last week. You know, there was just a screw up on my part. You know, it was travel, and I it just uh, took me a lot longer to to travel than than I thought it would. And next week, I will, oh gosh, I don't know, is it, next Monday is going to be another travel day for me. So I don't know where the heck I'm going to be broadcasting from. Maybe it'll be Des Moines. I don't know. Um, but I'll be on my way back from Michigan at the time. And, uh, and in the meantime, I hope you all have a, 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 an awesome week. I hope those of you that are north of, of Kansas City, stay warm. Uh, and uh, those of you south of Kansas City, I like I said yesterday when I left uh, when I left Temple, Texas, it was 78 degrees, and I know it was 70 in the 70s there again today. I can't wait to get back. I want to, like the song says, I want to go where the the weather suits my clothes just fine. Anyway, you're welcome, Henrietta. Uh, thank you, and God bless you also. Uh, I hope you have a great and blessed week, everyone, and uh, stay safe. We're coming into the Christmas, the the the, uh, the, the Christmas holiday here very quickly, and um, you know when you're out shopping, make sure you be safe and and don't overspend and and uh, just plan for a good healthy uh, a good healthy month. I will see you all next month uh, on, a, on, on the next Monday Mastery. If you have any questions, shoot them my way. If you need extra help, um, check out my book, Dating Backward, A Practical Guide to Dating and Finding Your Soulmate, where we talk about um, finding your, uh, the, creating your must-have and deal-breaker lists and recognizing the uh, four cornerstones of great, rela of great relationships. And that's building an intellectual, a spiritual, an emotional, and physical connection. Then speaking similar love languages and finding the chemistry that, that, that's necessary that, that helps hold all these things together. It, there are a lot of moving pieces or moving parts to a, uh, an extraordinary relationship. And I want to help you uh, pay attention to all those things and make sure that you find your extraordinary, your soulmate. Have a great week, everyone. I love you guys. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week on Monday Mastery.